Welcome to Martini Time. It's been a, been a while since I've uh, had a martini, so I'll let my hair grow. <laughs> so, oh, that's good. I think it's been a couple of months since I've done a martini time. Anyway, I've been letting my hair grow, and, uh, and the women like it. They say, oh, you look like a professor. <laughs> so the title of this talk is The Joy of Aging. So um, I just want to come clear with you. I'm just going to be honest uh, today. I'm going to be uh, vulnerable. I'm going to say next month I'll be 82. And uh, this afternoon I had a delightful time uh, because uh, two, uh, I got signed up for this, but two medical students from VCU uh, came to uh, examine me uh, as part of their uh, classes. I think they have a class in generics or something. And so, <laughs> and so these two uh, nice young ladies came out and spent a uh, golly day. They were here at 2 o'clock and they didn't leave until uh, just a few minutes ago. So I've been talking all ever since. And um, they, they came to um, see what, a, what, a, what, what see what an old person is like. <laughs> they, they came to see a, a, a real senior, a real, a real uh, geriatrics, and I think I confused them <laughs> so, because they, I, I, I didn't fit their mold, I didn't fit their questionnaire, and uh, we had a lovely time. Uh, the talk spanned from uh, how I got into yoga and how I got on a spiritual path. Uh, to what's death and what's life and um, the pharmaceutical industry and stress. We talked a lot about stress and we talked about how to find your inner peace and we talked about how to uh, uh, meditate and how, uh, how mindfulness works and why it's important and how to use your stress a as a practice. How to use your stress and what's given to you. And these kids uh, have a lot of stress. I mean, that's what being a medical student is, it's stress. So we talked a lot about how to make stress your friend, how to make stress your practice, how to make stress transparent, how to, how to make stress disappear, how to be happy, how to be at ease with what happens, how not to mind what happens, how not to mind what the world does. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be nice? not to be disturbed by the world. You see, our culture is, is, is a disturbed culture. And um, it's a grieving culture. We talked about that. Uh, it's grieving because it's losing things. It's losing its comfort. It's losing its expectations. It's losing its security. It's all loss. It's all grieving and anger, you see, when there's when, when grieving comes, if you can't rest in grieving, you become angry. Angry replaces grieving uh, because grieving makes you vulnerable. And anger comes in and, and like a first responder. So that if we feel vulnerable, if we feel like we're losing our opinion, our center, our belief, if we're losing something that the world modernity has taken it away from me, the government's taken it, we feel we're losing it, you see. Anger comes in and we feel like we're doing something. We're strong now. We're important. We're doing something. We're doing something about it. I'm angry, you see. It's all about grief. It's all about not being able to be vulnerable, to be grieving. To be okay with loss, to accept loss, you see, because life is loss. We're always losing it. Everything is losing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose this martini in a few minutes. <laughs> so these two beautiful young doctors came and sat with me for, with interest listening to me, asking questions. Having, we're having a great dialogue from 2 o'clock until almost 5 o'clock. And uh, we covered a wide range of topics. And uh, it, was an exp it was an adventure. We wandered here and there, and uh, everything was full of light and understanding and expansion. And uh, it was a bigger boat. So we all kind of like go around in a small boat. Uh, even the medical students, they were 
saying, well, you know, we're in a really closed system here. Everybody's doing the same thing, and it's a pressure cooker. It's a little boat. Last night, we were, uh, went to a, a birthday party for my wife's uh, classmates, uh, who they're all 80 now, turning 80. And it's a small boat, uh, you know, when people are leaving. But we all go around in a little boat, a little culture, a little boat, and we're afraid that we're going to leave it, we're going to lose it, you know. And we are. Boats sink. <laughs> Everything sinks, you see. So how do you live in a sinking world? How do you live in change? How do you live in stress with peace to it? So the title of this talk was The Joy of Aging. Well, I was really pumped up this afternoon, and I think that's one reason I came back to do another talk, uh, to get the inspiration for it, to say, what the hell, you know? And uh, so I'm doing this talk because I've got something to say, damn it. <laughs> I've got something of value. I've lived 80, almost 82 years, and I've been on this interior journey my whole life. I didn't, I wasn't successful in the external journey. I didn't have a successful career. I don't have uh, a lot of money in this. I don't have any money. I don't have any uh, pension. I don't have any fame. I don't have any books. I don't have any academia. I don't have any credentials. I don't have any plaques, although I did get some writing for the Courier Record. But I don't have anything external that one could measure as success. So I've been pretty much, if you want to measure it, you know, not very successful in my life. But I'm very rich inside because my journey has been interior. That's what I chose. I chose the interior journey. And when you choose the internal journey, your external journey kind of like looks like a tacking sailboat. I mean, one minute you're moving here, the next minute you're going there. The one minute you're leaving this job, the next minute you've got a different job. You're tacking in the wind of life, you see. But you're moving according to the wind, not according to the power boat, not according to the uh, power of the motor who's going to motor through, you see, in the like a machine and, and just uh, make things happen and become successful and uh, retire and then die. So I haven't been successful in the interior world, but I've been successful on the interior world because I'm happy. I'm happy with the world, even though it's a disaster. It can't be anything other than it is, you know. If you, if, if you wish it were something different, well, that's okay, but it can't be different. Can't be different than it is. You can't be different than you are, no matter how hard you try. You can't be different than you are. So accept it, relax, be okay with it. And you are the world and the world is you. That's my motto. That's what I first heard from J. Krishnamurti. You are the world and the world is you. His little teachings reverberate in me. You are the world and the world is you. But at the same time, you're not the world. And the world is not you, but there is Two, there's a base. There's a basic ground of goodness, a basic ground of peace, a basic ground of potential that is in the heart, this basic ground. And from that ground, you are the world and the world is you. Where can you go that you are not? Go to California, you're still there. Go to Mars, you're still there. Wherever you go, you are there, you are you. You are the world and the world is you. It's not external to you. But at the same time, we work in the world that is external to us. But that's the secondary. That's, that's the secondary world. The primary world is the one we're missing. The primary world is the world of unity. The world of oneness, of the heart, of being vulnerable, of being okay with loss because Life is loss. As soon as you are born, you're losing. As soon as anything is born, it's dying. Life and death are one. So when we view life from that place, from that place of unity, where everything is one, all the opposites are one, 
from that place, you're okay. No matter what you choose. If you go there, you're okay. If you choose to go there, you're okay. You can't not be okay from that point of view. But from this point of view of the mind, of choice, of ego in the world, well then you can do things to make things better. But if you don't also operate from the heart, you're not making things better. You're just making things worse. And you're just getting stressed out. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, wisdom that comes with the interior journey, with failure, with being okay that you're a failure, being okay that you haven't accomplished anything, being okay that you're getting old, being okay with who you are, when you can be from that place, you see, then everything shifts. Everything shifts. And that's when you destroy, discover the joy of aging, the joy of letting go, the joy of dying. In a sense, letting go is dying. The joy of dying is also the joy of life, because life and death are one when you see it from the heart, you see. Life and death are one. Where can you go that life is not? Where can you go that you are not? So you're okay from that point of view. But you see, we live floating on the surface of our culture, which divides us into this and that, you and me, and loss and death. So find that hole in culture, which is meditation, mindfulness, find that hole, that clear spot in the alchemy, in the algae of life, and drop through and discover the inner joy that transcends aging. So, thanks for dropping in. See you next time, if there is a next